I work alone, understand, alone. Bonnie and Clyde didn't work alone. Thelma and Louise didn't work alone. And they were the best. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best revenge schemes in movies. Nick loved a girl I was pretending to be. Cool girl. For this list, we'll be looking at the most dubious and shock-inducing plots concocted to exact vengeance. So is revenge a dish best served cold, or do you prefer it deep fried and slathered in chocolate sauce? Let us know in the comments. Also, we should warn you that there are spoilers ahead, so proceed with caution. Number 10. My Name Is The Princess Bride the best swordsman of fantasy metafiction carries a thirst for vengeance for half his life. Father, I have failed you for 20 years. Now our misery can end. When he was just a young boy, Inigo Montoya watched his father lose his life to a double-crossing scoundrel. As Inigo helps the film's main protagonist fight the villainous Prince Humperdinck, he comes across the six-fingered man who betrayed his father. And cue the iconic catchphrase. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. The scheme is the definition of on sight. After failing to track him down for years, Inigo immediately jumps into combat, and his strategy is absolutely thrilling to watch. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Stop saying that! His concluding remark also nails the satisfaction he must feel when he delivers the final blow. With a charismatic performance by Mandy Patinkin, we can't help but cheer him on. Number 9. Beautiful, Scheming, and Rich – Cruel Intentions Cursed with the ambivalence of others, these ultra-privileged teens exploit each other for social dominance. Catherine convinces her stepbrother Sebastian to take the virginity of new girl Annette. You don't stand a chance. Even this is out of your league. Care to make a wager on that? But in his attempts to woo her, Sebastian falls in love. In the final act, Sebastian passes away in a car accident. At his funeral, Catherine gives a convincing performance as the grieving sister. But folks see through her facade when Sebastian's journal is made public. If you really want to know the truth, then please read it. No more lies. It details Catherine's manipulation, exposing exactly the kind of person she is. If you're looking for a revenge story from beyond the grave, this one is it. You want me to say, Catherine, I'm sorry. What is going on? Don't you people have any respect? Number 8. The Besties Betrayal The Count of Monte Cristo Being betrayed by a close friend can really sting. Why are you doing this? It's complicated. Now imagine a betrayal so bad it lands you behind bars. Luckily, Edmund Dantes is able to escape and not without learning some useful life skills. When he returns to the free world as a powerful and enigmatic figure, he hatches a plan to implicate everyone who had a hand in his wrongful imprisonment. Who are you? I'm the Count of Monte Cristo. But my friends call me Edmond Dantes. A staged kidnap and rescue, plus the disclosure of the apparent location of a treasure, bring about the downfall of his former friends in more ways than one. What happened to your mercy? I'm a count, not a saint. Also, the symbolism isn't lost on us. The use of secret treasure to reveal secret crimes is brilliant. Number 7. Revenge Knows No Age Leon the Professional Life always this hard? Is it just when you're a kid? Always like this. The titular hitman of this film works in New York's Little Italy. During his exploits, he meets Matilda, a 12 year old girl who was recently orphaned by corrupt DEA agents. Leon reluctantly teaches her the tricks of the deadly trade in exchange for help with errands. In the film's final clash, Leon sacrifices himself to take out the man that killed Matilda's parents and brother. If you couldn't stand them, why are you crying? Because they killed my brother. What the hell did he do? Here, Leon uses Matilda's desire for retribution as a way to redeem himself from his past sins. The goals of these two protagonists are beautifully intertwined, and although Matilda is successful at getting her revenge, 
We have to wonder if she felt it was truly worth it by the end. I left with the greatest guy on earth. He was a hitman, the best in town. But he died this morning, and if you don't help me, I'll be dead by tonight. Number six, Bird of Prey, The Crow. This I, I'm sure you'll remember. You killed them on Halloween. In this dark and brooding tale, a man named Eric Draven is resurrected and avenges the murder of himself and his fiance. Eric's undying love is the core of his motivation for revenge. His pale face and black costume are dripping with romantic anger that fits this gothic universe perfectly. He methodically selects his targets, and each encounter delivers incredible stunts and special effects. After he tracks down the members of the gang responsible, he finally confronts their boss, Top Dollar. I have something to give you. I don't want it anymore. Thirty hours of pain. We also get to see the emotional toll of revenge in Eric's slightly erratic behavior. But thankfully, Eric finally gets the closure he was looking for when he rejoins his fiance in the afterlife. Number five, not the puppy, John Wick. When Ellen died, I lost everything until that dog arrived on my doorstep. In the criminal world, he's known as Baba Yaga, a ferocious creature from Russian folklore. This is just a taste of what makes John Wick's violent rampage so intense. When his dog, a gift from his late wife, is taken out by a gang of robbers, John becomes obsessed with revenge. On his path, we're introduced to an incredibly rich world with equally rich characters. You dip so much as a pinky back into this pond, you may well find something reaches out and drags you back into its depths. Literally, the assassin's form of currency is gold coins. John Wick's main motivation in the film is his beloved dog, who symbolized hope for a new life beyond just being an adorable, pure companion. When that's taken from him, we certainly understand his pursuit of justice, especially those of us with furry family members. And your son took that from me. Oh Stole that from me. Killed that from me! Number four, Amazing Amy, Gone Girl. Nick Dunn took my pride and my dignity and my hope and my money. He took and took from me until I no longer existed. That's murder. We start with a cheating husband, Nick Dunn, trapped in an unhappy marriage with his wife, Amy. The latter, fed up of having to play her cool girl role, goes to extremes to get back at her husband for not only the cheating, but for having to pretend to be some made-up, perfect woman in order for him to stay. Frustrations are so high, she fakes her own disappearance and incriminates Nick. To fake a convincing murder, you have to have discipline. You befriend a local idiot. It's a terrifying sort of brilliance, and made even more messed up by that twist ending. Why take the high road when you could go so, so low? We're gonna be parents. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Number three, Monkey See, Monkey Do, the girl with the dragon tattoo. May I kill him? In this heart-stopping book adaptation, a journalist collaborates with a hacker named Elizabeth Salander to investigate a mysterious disappearance. In the first act of the film, she winds up with an abusive state-appointed warden who exploits his control over her finances. Eventually, Lisbeth secretly records an instance of abuse in order to use it as blackmail. But first, she torments him with some very not-safe-for-YouTube methods. Lie still. I've never done this before. And there will be blood. This scene hits like a punch to the gut for many reasons, but also because this is Lisbeth's introduction to the story. It also shows us how brutal we can be when backed into a corner, and gives some weight to her role in this new pursuit of justice. I want you to help me catch a killer of women. Number two, her path of fury, promising young woman. So what would you have me do? Ruin a young man's life every time we get an accusation like this? This story follows Cassie, who's lost her best friend due to a brutal assault from her former classmate, Al. When she finds out Al's getting married years down the line, she sets a plan into motion. 
Everyone who was complicit in the assault and subsequent death of her friend has a price to pay. What makes this story so compelling is the lack of violence. I don't know if I can live with the threat of this hanging over me. I didn't even do anything. Okay. Poor Ryan, just an innocent bystander. Most revenge stories involve several action sequences, but most of this movie showcases deliberate strategy. The way Cassie uses the actions of her enemies to shame them feels eerily authentic. Even when Cassie meets her demise, her vengeful plan lives on to bring Al to justice. In the end, her purpose became an unstoppable force. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Bride, Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2. When fortune smiles on something as violent and ugly as revenge, it seems proof like no other that not only does God exist, you're doing his will. After she suffers the ultimate betrayal, this assassin vows to take out the man who made it happen. The bride's story is told in a non-linear fashion, but we understand exactly what happened. She was nearly murdered while pregnant. Her rage is expressed in her simple hit list and badass fighting skills. The film also serves as an excellent homage to exploitation films. You promised you'd be nice. No, I said I'd do my best. That's hardly a promise. This pulpy subgenre is known for its revenge schemes and extreme violence. Here, the bride hacks and slashes through her enemies. She stops at little to deliver her vengeance and even travels to the other side of the world. It's all delivered with such intensity that failure seems unthinkable. You and I have unfinished business. Baby. You ain't kidding. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.